Welcome, everyone. Kevin Carpenter here. I have the pleasure of chatting with Herb, uh, Herb Sutter. Uh, we're talking about ACCU coming up here on April 17th. And so I just have to hit because I know you've posted this on HerbSutter.com, but ACCU says that the title for your talk, for your keynote to kick everything off is to be decided. So tell us about your keynote at ACCU this year, because I'm excited. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I, in fact, yes, I owe them that, and I, I hope to send them that today. <laughs> so thank you, ACCU, for your patience. Um, I, I was t- The short answer is I want to talk about safety, and I want to give an update on CPP front. Thanks. Uh, the, the slightly longer answer is I'm sometimes tempted to do what Scott Myers successfully did for many years and never got any pushback for it, was to put in a title that says three cool things in C++, <laughs> and then he could decide the day before what things to talk about. You know, but I mean, with the amount of time, you know, I think of you and 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 Scott, it's like for the amount of time you've been doing C++, is it actually pretty easy to hop on a stage and just talk for an hour about various C++? How, I mean, I think of how much prep I have to do for a talk, and I like to imagine it's easier for you. <laughs> it is easy to step to step on a stage and talk poorly. Okay. It is never easy to step on a stage and talk well. Uh, it, it, you need to have your ducks in a row. You need to have your information updated, your your demos actually tested to make sure they compile, <laughs> um, and and to do a rehearsal. In fact, the number one tip I give to new speakers, uh, if they ask, is like after you've done all your preparation and all the usual things, make sure your main points are orderly and one builds on next and. You've got the connectives so they're related and make sure you have a concise introduction and conclusion so you don't spend half your talk on the intro. Those basics, rehearse. Because after you've done all that work, you are only shortchanging yourself and more importantly, the audience, if you don't just do the whole talk out loud to your cat end to end. And ideally with a couple of other people in the room, but even just to your cat. And when talks go long, and I, I include myself here, <laughs> when talks go long, it is a tell that the speaker did not do a full rehearsal out loud because that shows they didn't know how long their talk was. So, yes, it's easy to get up on a stage and, and just talk poorly. Um, yeah. it's, it, it requires work to, 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 dig the, to you know, respect the audience and make sure that there's something worth saying. In, in a baked way, not a quarter baked way. And I, I totally get what you're saying, because even, like I said, you know, as a newer speaker, the few talks that I have given, you know, my last talk I did at C++ online, and I'd never done a virtual talk. So I was a little extra nervous not being able to see the audience. Um, and I think I spent about mm-hmm. three hours on the treadmill, you know, for three separate times to run through just walking and talking it out loud. And I felt sorry for the person next to me. I was trying to be quiet, but, but yes. And then, you know, it, it goes so much smoother just because it's, you never say the same thing, but I think you, you have a better sense of exactly what I want to say. And so it comes out with that smoothness. Yeah. yeah. Well, even if I have rehearsed it end to end, one thing I've noticed is that for me, the best way to have a smooth talk is to say it out loud the night before. Like, yeah. if I do it the morning of, it's not quite the same effect. If I do it the day before, what I find is I give what I think is the same talk, but it's just smoother. Yeah, there are fewer regressions, fewer hesitations, fewer repetitions. Um, it's it it just helps to keep things in mind. I got gotcha. you. So, so we can talk a, a long time about unprepared speakers. <laughs> oh, I I mean for. I mean, because you, you go all the way back. I, I was looking and I said I was going to pull something from the archive. So 1998, I read uh, your State of the C++ Union you wrote when you were coming back. And and it's interesting because I pulled that up because you talk about our prepared speakers, but it's like you've been publishing and writing for a long time. So I'm sure your experience is vast. One of the things that was in that, though, that you were talking about is when it comes to committee, you have this combination of features versus um making, you know, documenting what is actually done. And so my question is, from where you were back then to now, how much do you think that that is still the juggle when it comes to C++ and the standards? I don't remember this article at all, but I, I think that those two are, are perennial um, that things to balance. And so we try to do a good job of that. One thing that we 
didn't do then and that we do a much better job of now is writing trip reports, both by individual people, like the folks at Red, Red yep. Hat often writing minus mm -hmm. one. But there's a nice, the, the best one is usually a nice crowdsourced one that uh, many of the committee chairs and, and others work to create on Reddit after each meeting. And so the Tokyo meeting that just finished, uh, a day or two later, there was a nice trip report on Reddit with a lot of detail about what's happening with individual proposals. And especially as the committee has now grown quite a bit, it helps people to see what's going on because the interest in C++ continues to grow. Um, we've, we've had our, our tied for our biggest meeting uh, since the, in the history of the committee. That's including virtual yeah. attendees because since the pandemic were hybrid, but it still ties our previous record of, of people participating. And in some ways, it's actually harder to participate virtually because many people did that by being completely inverted, time shifted on the East Coast of North America or in Europe, where they were working through the right. night to be able to participate remotely. Uh, in some ways, that's a lot harder than getting <laughs> on a plane to Tokyo and you know doing the jet lag once and then just you know. Uh, working with the sun instead of against the sun. But I think that a as things have grown and as we've done a better job of communicating, I think that's helped a lot. I think mean, consider that we're now 220, 230 people at the most recent meeting. And it used to be that 60 was a big meeting. Right. So uh, it's, it's come a long way. That's incredible. And I was reading actually your trip report this morning. And so it's, it's interesting because I got your note about how you we've had high school classes show up, you know, even just of you. And and so that leads me to a question. If someone That's a pretty regular thing these days. And that's really cool. But for you know, anyone is I so correct me if I'm wrong, but anyone is allowed to come and join in and view from watching it uh the 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 meeting happen, correct? So yes, with an asterisk. Okay. I have to invite them. So the convener, ah, the, the okay. chair of the committee has to invite them. So I make sure to invite people. Gotcha. So at this most recent meeting, I think it was about 35 individuals that, that I invited who were first time attendees. And that's not counting the high school class. The, the high school class was like a 36 <laughs> omnibus invitation. And I can tell that ISO is getting used to it because the first time I did that, they're like, well, who are the individual names? And I just said, it's the class of your teacher's name. <laughs> There, it's, there, it's the local high school computer science class. They have one of those. This is great. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, now they don't question me on it anymore. <laughs> they just say, oh, okay, another high school class. Oh, that's so, cool. Fortunately, I, so as, as much as a stickler for rules that they are and procedures, which could be a negative and a positive, yeah. um, they, they are flexible. And so they, I'm, I'm very glad that they let us do that. And uh, even if the class is just there for half a day, just to see how the sausage is made, yep. see how People work on a standard and produce uh, uh, produce a standard, review papers. Um, the feedback we've had so far is that they found it interesting, which is a happy surprise to me because I could imagine it all coming across as, as completely dull to, to teenagers. But I'm glad that at least some of them find it interesting what we do. That's really cool. So back to your talk. So safety, C++, a big thing, especially with some of the news articles that have come out lately. So CPP front, um, you know, that's, we're going on three years now. I mean, at least when I'm looking at the GitHub, I, so 2022, two years. Okay. Well, well, I, I first announced it a year and a half ago. Okay. I know it seems a lot longer, but I first announced it a year and a half ago, um, at CPP right. 2022, which was toward the end of 2022. But yeah, I've been working on this, um, uh, in various ways since 2015. I, I kind of figured cause I was reading through. Uh, the notes that you have there of where some of the pieces came from. So I'm curious for you, CPP front, like I'm, I like, I, you know, I've heard the comparison to a TypeScript for C++. Um, I have not used it a lot, so I'll use that caveat. I've started looking at it. I like where you're going with it. Is it, I like the fact that you're saying it's not a replacement, but how much of it in your mind is more research and building ideas that can carry forward versus do you think it'll, I mean, the amount of people that are contributing to it now compared to when you first introduced it, I think is incredible. But what was your, as you started doing it, where was your mindset? What were you going for on that? If you don't mind? To, to try out some ideas, to, to learn some things, to have a personal experiment out, out in public and I appreciate the interest. In fact, at first it was kind of surprising. I, I got the interest because I didn't know how to create a GitHub repo um, that 
that had no that that had no issues. I, I turned issues off. So people submitted PRs instead of issues instead. So I had to turn on issues. And so over time, it's, it's grown. And so now there's discussion pages and, and a wiki and actual documentation. So at the one-year anniversary, which was last CCCCon, uh, there was a session at CCCCon that, that uh, folks asked to have organized just to talk for an hour about CCC2 and get together and, and have a birds of a feather. And I took a quick poll of like, like here's five things like that I think are important to be working on. If you could pick any two of them, what would they be? And we took a took a vote. By far, number one was documentation. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I got to write. Okay, well, I know how to write, but it's, I also know writing takes time. So I learned MK Docs and the Material Theme, which is just great. Um, and thanks to Greg Marr and, and others yep. for pushing me to, to do that and, and for helping to write documentation. But that, you know, ate, ate a couple, three months. But now there's actually documentation as well. So I still bill it as my personal experiment, an experimental compiler with an experimental syntax to learn some things. I'm contributing those back to ISO C++ as proposals for today's C++ syntax as evolutionary proposals. Um, but who knows? It's, I'm still I'm still building it out on it, and we'll see where it goes. But my personal experiment, it's just already gone farther than I thought it would. So that's nice to see. Thanks for the interest, everybody. That's really cool. Well, I will say that if we want to see what comes out of the safety talk, you need to get your ticket for ACCU now. Um, April 17th, there's some free classes. If you, if you want to join them, by all means, please check them out. Um, I could talk with you probably for another hour and a half, but you know we've already discussed people will drop off. So <laughs> I will finish up with that, and I well, and we can do that at ACC. That's too. what I say. I'm like, I'll finish up with this, and then I'll see you at ACC, and we can continue chatting there. I appreciate your time this morning, Herb. Thank you so That's much. Great. Yeah, thank you. See you soon.